right, hello everyone. Most of you know me, but for those of you who might not, my name is Molly Gregory. I am a senior in high school and I'm homeschooled. My family and I moved here almost 10 years ago when I was six years old. I work at Chick-fil-A and I also take piano and violin lessons. It is a real privilege to share with you guys today. Today, I will continue in our current study from the Sermon on the Mount. Last Sunday, we wrapped up the Beatitudes, and today we are moving deeper into the great sermon of Jesus to his disciples. Let me read just the first part of the text for this morning. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. Dear Lord, I pray that you would just be with me uh, today as I bring this message um, to your people, and I just pray that uh, your spirit would be here and that uh, you would just open our eyes to see what you have for us today. Amen. So the first illustration that Jesus brings to us to help us understand how we are to live here in this life is salt. Now we all use salt in our daily lives from enhancing our food to our roads in the winter to make our water soft to even using it on icy sidewalks. What might Jesus be saying to us about our Christian life by saying we are the salt of the earth? Let's consider some of the variety of uses for salt. The first one is purity. Now, as we learned a few weeks ago when Jesus said, blessed is the pure in heart for they shall see God. We understand once again that purity is vital to God. We are reminded that even our motives are to be pure and that purity means untainted and unadulterated. In Jesus' time, the Romans considered salt to be pure because it came from the sun and the sea, the purest of all things. Jewish customs also reveal that they too considered salt to be pure and would even put it on their offerings. This applies to us today that we are to be examples of purity in everything we do. We are to keep, we are to keep pure in our conduct, speech, heart, and mind. We are to keep ourselves not just from sexual uncleanliness, but gossip, jealousy, anger, and deception. Our work, relationships, and how we treat one another, our dress, and even our money are all areas that we must be an example of purity, even as we offer ourselves up to God as the daily offering of our lives. The next thing that salt does is salt creates thirst. There is a story of a man who was traveling who stopped at a club in the airport to wait for his flight. The hostess came and she asked him if he wanted something to drink. He said yes and ordered a ginger ale. The hostess brought out the drink and a dish full of snacks. The man did not order any snacks, nor did he intend to pay for them, but the dish was all part of a plan. She brought out the snacks because it was full of salt. The goal was to make him order another drink, and the goal of the salt was to create thirst so that he would keep spending his money. We are the salt of the earth. The idea is that our presence in the world will create spiritual thirst so that we can offer people the living water, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This also comes back to what we learned a few weeks ago, that we must thirst for righteousness. Salt causes you to be thirsty, thus recognizing your need for water, or in this case, righteousness. Now that we know that we are to thirst for righteousness, how can we quench our thirst? That is by earnestly seeking God through prayer, reading and studying his word, and communion and fellowship with other believers. My next point about salt is that salt preserves. Fulciarch, a Greek historian, has a strange way of putting this. He says that meat is a dead body and part of a body, and if will left to itself go bad, but salt preserves it and keeps it fresh and is therefore like a new soul inserted into a dead body. It also keeps from corruption, which is our job as Christians to do for our culture. We can accomplish this in many ways. One is by being a good citizen that votes for candidates whose policies align close with scripture and obeying the law and those who enforce it, unless it is contrary to the word of God. My last point about salt is that it has flavor. Food that is not salted is not very good. Christianity is what salt is to food we are to be with life. Jesus wants us to overcome sin and corruption and make it easier to do good in our presence. An example of this is a person whose presence a dirty joke would never be told. Therefore, he makes it easier for others to do good simply by being there. We are also supposed to add flavor to life. However, in this area, we have been misrepresented by the world. 
Christians are viewed as judgmental, stern, and fun eaters, and at times we as Christians think that way about ourselves. There have been times when we have all wished to sin because it looks enjoyable. Because we are so focused on this and have it in the back of our minds, we live in longing and melancholy. In doing so, we do not live as God intended for us to live, which is as fountains of joy. The second illustration that Jesus uses us to help us understand our Christian lives in this present world is light. Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Now the first question to ask you about this is where does our light come from? When we are commanded to be the light of the world, we must understand that our light does not come from ourselves, but rather from Jesus. We are to reflect his light into the world, just like the moon reflects the light from the sun. We really are borrowing the light of God. We are not to produce the light, but to reflect it. William Barclay said, the radiance which shines from the Christian is lit by the presence of Christ within the Christian's heart. We often speak of a radiant bride, but the radiance which shines from her comes from the love that which has been born within her heart. As we learn many times from the Bible, a light is meant to be seen, not hidden. Therefore, Christianity is meant to be seen, not just to the church, but to the world. Our light is to shine so that others may see Christ's light in us and come to know Jesus through us. We are not to hide our light, be ashamed of it, but to let our light shine. Why should we do this? So that the world will see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. We must keep in mind always that this is not for our glory or to be seen by others in order that they might like us, admire us, or even seek to be like us. The goal from the text today is that our good works bring glory to God, our Father. In closing, let's ask and ponder some questions from today's message. How should, we, how should we show the purity of Jesus in the way we live our lives? This would include work, relationships, and how we handle and view money. This would also include our motives, our thoughts, our speech, and what we watch on our phones. We must always remember that we are always being viewed by others and that there is no influencing someone or not influencing someone at all. We are either influencing them for God or against him. The second one is how can we be used of God to produce a thirst for Jesus Christ, just like salt produces a thirst for water? Would not the fruit of the Spirit draw people? Do not people desire to have love, joy, peace, and the list goes on? And how might we serve as a preservative? Would it not be by showing Christ-like conduct to others? And how might we bring flavor to a life that can be dull and lifeless? This is by sharing God's love and joy with others. And how are we to be the light of the world? As I stated earlier, we are to be an example of Jesus' love. One way we can do this is through works. This is simply because actions speak louder than words, not that we must earn our salvation. One point to remember about light is that we are to be reflectors of God's light, and we do this by our good works so that others may glorify our Father in heaven. In closing, I want to bring attention to a song most of us know, This Little Light of Mine. This gospel song expresses a core part of today's message. Our light may be small, but nonetheless, we will let it shine. As the song says in many ways, we won't let Satan blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. We should let it shine all over Jeff City. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes home. I'm going to let it shine. No matter what, let's be salt and light for Jesus' sake and for the sake of others who need to know God and his love. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this time to be able together to learn about you and I also thank you um, just for the other youth that have come together um, to make this service happen. And I just pray that you would be with us all um, as we go out and enjoy the rest of our Sunday. In Jesus' name.